Welcome, everyone, to Brewers Stadium. I'm Andy. And I am the chairman, Sean. This week, Iron Brew Wild Pear. Welcome back, everybody, for our second Iron Brew episode of Commander's Brew. It's Andy. It's Sean. The chairman is here. This is going to be a great one. Yeah, uh, we are doing this is another Iron Brew. If you're just tuning in, the Iron Brew is is the, our new episode idea where one of us, the ch- I'm the chairman this week, gives the other one three cards that must be used in a deck. Uh, the commander must be those colors. In this case, it will be a Sultai commander. Uh, and anything goes. We'll just see what the other person comes up with. As always... We're all we, we're we're gonna brew decks on a budget. It's gonna be under fifty bucks. We're brought to you by uh, a few generous organizations, entities, if you will. Uh, the Wizards Tower, WizardTower.com, uh, Ultimate Guard, sleeves and boxes. Got them boulders and archives, and of course our patrons, patreoncom commanders brew. That's where to find us. And one of the reward levels. For at, one, at any reward level, no matter what, if you're donating through Patreon, you have access to our Discord, and, which includes uh, where we put the challenge to our Discord as well. So we have these decks brewed. Uh, we're about to record them, but we will maybe I'll maybe like upload a little follow up thing as a bonus just to talk about the kinds of brews that our Discord came up with with these challenges to see how they differ, if they differ, and what other angles they use. I love that idea. Check out our YouTube for that as well. Um, mm-hmm. uh, YouTube.com slash Commanders Brew. You can find us also putting up our um, our brews news segments separately. So you don't have to wait till the end of an episode or fast forward if you want to rewatch. Uh, one of our brews news segments, you can just go there and sort of catch up on some old ones if you if you missed any. Or, uh, yeah, you can go there and check those out. There's a much more you know, visual aspect to it these days than there used to be. Uh, we really go all out these days um, yes. as far as the brews news segments go. You know, and, uh, you know, the brews news segments, you know, maybe you got a magic friend who's not a commander player. Those are real shareable. Uh, on, that's uh, true. The social media. Yeah, not, right? Those are not commander specific uh, necessarily. Yeah. I mean, they're usually dealing with cards that we play in commander, but magic magic players in general will know what we're talking about when we go to those. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. This, uh, first of all, last week's episode, I challenged Sean with three cards and uh, Sean came up with a great brew. Uh, it was a very interesting brew, uh, very, I'd say, quite spicy if we're talking about the cookout level of, uh, yeah. of, uh, of brews. We saw a lot of cards we're not usually we're not used to dealing with, and I think we're going to see some of that here today as well. Oh, yeah. If we were to, yeah, if you're talking about, like, uh, Commander Cookout, yeah. their spicy thing. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Uh, If I understand the spice calculator at all, <laughs> I will wager these are extremely spicy <laughs> very spicy because they're so random yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah these are very <laughs> spicy brews here on iron brew slash commander's brew we uh we deal in spice uh with these episodes <laughs> specifically so uh um, the spice must flow the spice must flow spice is dune dune is spice um <laughs> please always remember that uh yeah well sean i mean you know um let's get let's get into it let's uh chairman what have you pre- what have you uh prepared for us today Oh, d- uh, as chairman, first we must throw to a wizard tower ad. Oh, yes, then of course, right. We will brew. Then we will brew. Hello, I am a river herald. Yeah, I've been doing this job a long time, and I had to look up what is a herald. So uh, I looked up in my job description on Google <laughs> what is a herald. It is a person or thing that precedes or comes before. Okay, so I, you know, if I'm the River Herald, I'm before the river. That makes sense. I'm at the front of the river. Uh, we got a Herald of Secret Streams. That's great. Before those, River Herald's boon. That's my boon. I got a boon. Boons are great. Uh, but then, 
Got a new got a new person showing up shadowing me, the forerunner of the Heralds. Forerunner is also before. This guy is before the before the things. How many layers deep does this go? Okay? You know, each time we cut out the middleman, that's why you need to go to my website, onlyoneherald.com, and sign my digital petition for underwater. I'm going to take it to Kumena anyway. If you can't go to that website, I have no idea if it works yet or if it is a thing. You should go to wizardtower.com, the Wizards Tower. You can get free shipping on magic singles anywhere in Canada if you spend $15 or more. Uh, use coupon code I Love Brews to get an extra 5% off, and you can get 3% kickback on your next order. Uh, and then eventually go to Forerunner of the Wizards Tower and Herald of the Forerunner of the Wizards. You see, it's too many loops. There shouldn't be a Forerunner of the Herald. I don't like them. Yes, another hilarious ad featuring characters from the current block (laughs) you can always rely on that (laughs) if nothing else in life okay uh yes as chairman andy your challenge is to brew around the following cards wild pear for green green for an enchantment whenever a creature enters the battlefield if you cast it from your hand, you may search your library for a creature card with the same total power and toughness and put it onto the battlefield. If you do, shuffle your library. Okay. Your next challenge, next card is a split card. This is a Driven to Despair. On the front, one and a green for a sorcery. Until end of turn, creatures you control gain trample and... Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. And while this card is in your graveyard, it has Aftermath for one and a black sorcery. Until end of your turn, creatures you control gain Menace, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card. Spicy. Spicy And your final card, the final ingredient that must be used in your dish, Crab Umbra, (laughs) Blue, Aura, Enchant Creature, Two, Blue, Untap enchanted creature, totem armor. If enchanted creature would be destroyed, instead remove all damage from it and destroy this aura. Okay, okay. A mm. most challenging uh, combination of secret ingredients here today in Brewer's Stadium, Brewer's Kitchen, whatever you want to call it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so this, um, so we obviously have a Sultai uh, brew here. Uh, so the first challenge for me was to. Uh, uh, well, really, it was to brew the deck and then decide what commander. But let's talk about it from the top down. Let's look at the, what commander I used. I really tried hard, and I generally try hard to avoid picking commanders that just you just use them for the colors. But in this deck, it was a little hard because, well, for one thing, uh, Sultai commanders are expensive. Um, a bunch of them are kind of expensive and, and or banned. Uh, and if you want to go with the partners, <laughs> the partners are expensive. So... We had to just come in to, and just to come in under budget and have these colors. We got to go with our the good old Sadisi Brood Tyrant. Um, we really don't use these abilities at all. It's simply a creature that you can cast if for some reason you need a creature. It's one in Sultai colors, so black, green, blue. When it, when Sadisi enters the battlefield, you put the top three cards of your library in your graveyard, and uh, if whenever one or more creature cards are put into the graveyard from your library, you put a two-two black zombie out onto the battlefield. So I mean. It it does if it helps us a little bit in that you might get two creatures off of it. That's uh, that's how this will ever play into it. But uh, despite that, let's look at the real, the true heart of these of this deck, which is the secret ingredients. So, oh, and sorry, can I just I just want to uh, squeeze squeeze on. Yeah, yeah, there uh, you go. Yeah. And the reason wild pair is a bit awkward because it must be cast from hand exactly so which is why your commander's power and toughness is irrelevant exactly so the, the commander will not ever, ever trigger wild pair so it doesn't matter right uh, otherwise mm-hmm. that would have been definitely a consideration if it was then i would be looking for uh, uh six p- total power toughness because i would be looking to use the dc uh, for the wild pair triggers but that's not how it works so Brewing with Wild Pear. Now, I don't know how many of us have done this before, but this is my first time. Uh, it's definitely a card that I know, Sean, you've been thinking about a lot. Uh, I've always also thought about it. Like, it's it's such an interesting uh, card. It's such an interesting ability. How do we use it in Commander? You really have to. It's really in the deck building process that you really, like, consider this card. 
And you kind of have to, so what, what I've decided, what I decided to do at first, I was going to build three, like three pair blocks. Okay. I was going to do one pair block that cared about tapping for the crab umbra. I was going to do one pair block that cared about making, uh, going wide and making a bunch of creatures for the, uh, for the driven to despair. And then also I was going to make just a bunch of big ones because I thought that's the true flavor of wild pair is to get two big creatures for the price of one. But that also uh, works nicely with uh, Driven to Despair because it gives, Driven to Despair gives things to uh, trample as well as menace, right? Um, it ended up that I didn't even need that third grouping. So every creature in this deck, and I'll, except one, and I will I will uh, <laughs> reveal that one in a bit, <laughs> every single creature in, in, in this deck, the power total power toughness is either two or 12. Ah, either two or 12. So you're either going to get like one ones or O twos, or you're going to get six sixes or five sevens or seven fives or whatever. Um, either end of the dice. Exactly. Rolls. Exactly. Uh, now, um, this sounds like I've got a bunch, like my curve probably looks like this, like 15 to 20 cards on one side, uh, maybe two or three in the middle. And then all of them at the end. Surprisingly, no, that is not. And that's where we get our value from. Uh, these cards actually span the curve, and actually the curve is pretty good. I gotta say, it's a little heavier on the on that like six drop side of things, a little bit, but not not so bad. I think it actually looks like a pretty regular commander deck curve. Um, so what you're doing is you're casting these sh little ones that have that power toughness, and you're getting uh, a bigger, like a more expensive card, and that's so you're getting a lot of value through that. You're not paying that like five or six mana it wants you to pay for the one one that does something really cool. You're just, you're just gonna get that for free. Um, Great. So let's take a look at uh, first um, <clears throat> the uh, a really spicy addition to the so so overall. First of all, I just want to say wild pear is the main course of this dish. Everything works here with wild pear. Uh, that's I just think that's the way you have to build when you're using wild pear. Like why not have every creature work with it, right? Um, so let's talk about how crab umbra and so so and wild pear are gonna are gonna pair up. Uh, Crab Umbra, uh, first of all, let's, um, it's the untapping uh, enchantment that Sean just read. Um, so we want things that tap, and then we want to untap them and use them again. So at a very base level, uh, Archivist is here. Uh, Archivist is 2 and 2 blue for a 1-1 one, one human wizard, which is mildly important, uh, to, and it just taps to draw a card. Um, drawing cards in this deck, just as in any commander deck, is very important, but in this deck we really want to draw a lot of cards. Uh, first of all, to get to our ramp and to get to those types of things, but also we want to have a lot of creatures so that we're doubling up and then we can really go hard. And also you really want to find wild pair. It's, uh, it's not a hundred percent essential or anything. The deck actually is still, uh, surprisingly good without it, but, um, it really, really gets going when you have your wild pair. So drawing, drawing lots of cards is going to help us get there. Uh, so yeah, for the, so for first, first and foremost, let's draw some cards with archivist. Uh, what else do we have here that taps and untaps? Uh, yes. Another creature that is a 1-1, one, one, so this is our 2, is going to be Royal Assassin. One black, black, human assassin, 1-1, one, one, tap. Destroy target tapped creature. This bad boy goes back to the beginnings of the game, I mm -hmm. think. Like, Royal Assassin. I remember Royal Assassin. Fourth uh, edition, I believe, yeah. Yeah, that's when I started playing. Royal Assassin was a rare, and a friend of mine scoured other card shops and got four copies of it and the this deck was mostly unbeatable uh because he had four royal assassins we couldn't do anything you can't attack it. you can't do anything no it's the only i built a deck that was designed to beat it and it was four prodigal sorcerers and it was just a matter of who gets theirs out first yeah, yeah <laughs> right? you can ping theirs but then they kill yours back but at least they both died <laughs> i'll but tell you like what if i can cast mine first his will have summoning sickness first right. so like like yes. and then i'll just keep them off the board with my prodigal yeah. sorcerer well i can tell you right now that you can do that yourself in this deck because prodigal sorcerer is also in this deck uh, because it was a classic tapper so two classic tapping creatures there royal assassin and prodigal sorcerer oh yeah uh, and they're also both one ones right so that makes that's uh yep. that's great uh another uh so so you know you'll cast some of these uh um there are some smaller one ones that we'll be getting and then there's some bigger more expensive ones like a zombie lady of scrolls two blue 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 for an o2 she's not a one one she's an o2 so she, but she uh -huh. still counts it's total power toughness um yep. she's a human wizard and she says tap an untapped wizard you control draw a card 
Uh, so this works on many levels, of course, with our Crab Umbra, but this also just lets us tap some of the other uh, creatures we have. And I did, I tried, whenever possible, I tried to skew towards a wizard. There's not a ton of wizards in here. There's about, oh, I don't know, six or seven. But just um, just having a zombie be like another archivist, just another creature you can tap to draw a card is, is nice, right? Uh, and, this, mm -hmm. and she, of course, she, can, um, she gets around uh, summoning sickness as well, which is nice. The way yes. the wording on her uh, card works. So yeah, so there's a bunch of little tappers in here. There's some pingers. There's some uh, uh, card draw. There's some stuff that like kills creatures. Um, uh, those are basically the three things that we end up doing. There's one that like counters a spell and that sort of thing. So um, those are those are really cool. So that's how we're. That's obviously how we're going to use crab umbra. Although crab umbra is also really nice because it protects the creature it's on. So. Putting it on an Azami Lady of Scrolls to me is a great idea because now she becomes a little harder to kill, a little harder to get off the board. So uh, you're going to want to do that. Um, so like I said, uh, that's going to be one side of things um, uh, is the tapping. The other side of things is let's fill up the board so that we, so when we cast Driven to Despair, even if we don't kill our opponents, we're going to draw so many cards from it. They're going to discard so many cards and we're so hopefully going to get a lot of, uh, of damage through. Um, but if we have a lot of our little guys, which tends to happen at the beginning of the game with this deck, uh, we just want to get through and get a lot of card draw. So that's one side of using Driven to Despair. Not necessarily to win the game, but to get into the position where we can win the game. Uh, so let's talk about this card uh, first on this one. Sean, why don't you read this one for us? Okay, we've got Kazandu Tusk Caller. One and a green for a human shaman. Uh, this is a level up creature. So it starts as a 1-1. One, one. One, one, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and can, for one and a green, levels up. So level up is only unusual in the sense that creatures don't start at level one. Right, <laughs> right? yes. Creatures start at level zero. So you got level one, nothing happens. But between level two and five, you can tap to put a three, three green elephant creature token onto the battlefield. And then if you get to six, tap, put two of those onto the battlefield. So, you know, do you want to just stop at two? Is it worth investing into six? I mean, if you've got nothing better to do, maybe. But mm -hmm. uh, you might, you, it's, it's reasonable to stop at two and then just start cranking out elephants. Yep. Uh, just a good mana sink also. Uh, if you've just got two mana lying around after you've cast something for your turn, like, doesn't hurt to put it to level three. That's just a little bit closer to six. And then that will make the inevitable crab umbra that you get <laughs> uh, worth it, <laughs> uh, really worth it to pay the three to untap because they knew Tuscala because she makes... She can eventually make two uh, um, elephants for you. Although you are very happy to pay, essentially pay four, no, essentially pay three mana to get two green elephants if you get Crab Umbra on Kazandu Tuscaller. So that's nice. But also she lets us go a little bit wider, right? She get, makes more creatures for Driven to Despair. Also, of course, Hornet Nest is another one. It's two and a green Ooh, for a defender. Yes. It's an O2. And it says whenever Hornet Nest is dealt damage, put that many 1-1 one, one green insect creature tokens with flying and a death touch onto the battlefield. So hopefully... Chairman likes this card. Yeah, Chairman loves this card. Hopefully we can get Hornet's <laughs> Nest down and, you know, someone's trying to get in there and trying to attack us. Well, we're going to just block your 4-4 four, four or 5-5 five, five or something and get a bunch of little tokens. And that's going to be very good for Driven to Despair. Oh, wow. As well as just being yes. good blockers, obviously, right? So, like, you, generally people won't even want to attack into you if you have Hornet's Nest out because of what you can get from it, right? So it's almost like it's not even a threat of activation. It's a threat of like threat of what will happen <laughs> if, it, if yeah. you block with Hornet's Nest. So um, it's a great card. We, we, we also like the going wide strategy because it allows us to buy time, again, until we can maybe find our Driven to Despair or find our uh, Wild Pair, which is great. Yeah, these are flying Death Touch 1-1s. One yeah. Like 1-1 one one Death Touch flying is in my opinion, near perfect deterrence. Yeah. Right. I mean, the, if they have first strike, they don't care, mm -hmm. but like nothing, nothing's getting through and living. If they have trample. Okay. So we chomp and we take a bunch of damage as well, but the thing that trampled is gone. Yeah. And th this is, this is really one of the great tools to uh, this. This might be one of the first things you get in this deck with, with wild pair. Like, Wild Pair ends up being a really great thing for toolboxy type stuff. So we can cast yeah. a creature, and I know that there are multiple other creatures in the deck that can help me in whatever situation is happening on the board right now, and Hornet's Nest is one of yeah. those, for sure. 
I also think that like this is also you know a lot of decks run blasphemous act right yeah. you can't you can't wipe the board with blasphemous act with the hornetsness out there or else you'll be facing thirteen yeah. death thirteen de- uh, one one flying death touchers amazing yeah uh, next uh, ooh a next possible driven to despair candidate is marsh flitter three black fairy rogue one one there's that one again flying. When Marsh Flitter enters the battlefield, put two 1-1 one, one black goblin rogue creature tokens on the battlefield. Sacrifice a goblin. Marsh Flitter becomes 3-3 three, three until end of turn. Yep. So not like a super flashy card by any means, but it's three bodies in one, uh, which is what we're looking for here. Um, and it's a 1-1, one, one, of course. And then uh, th- this little minor upside of being able to sack a goblin, she becomes a 3-3, three, three, is something you might uh, might consider. But uh Really, we're just here to get three bodies, much like the next card, which is Eyeless Watcher, which is basically the same type of thing. It's three and a green for a 1-1. Uh, but when it comes into play, you get two Eldrazi Scions, uh, which are 1-1s. And you can sack them to add colorless to your mana pool. So a little bit more of a, of a utility there in that you can sort of ramp yourself into something. Um, but really, those are both those both those creatures are there just to get um, just to get go a little wider, get some more bodies on the uh, on the on the battlefield there horrifying horrifying art eyeless watcher what how <laughs> just that idea is a spooky idea yeah. someone without eyes watching you is very spooky Ooh, Ooh no <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have eyes but it's still looking at me somehow uh that the more i think about it the creep more creeped out i'm getting i need it let's move on uh so i was i'm very like i i'm i'm imp- i'm impressed with magic but i'm also and i'm also kind of like Huh, look at what I managed to do. It is some some of the synergies that you kind of discover in when you're working with this like kind of these challenges, these limitations are really fun. This one's great, Living Hive. So, like I said, the other side of the other side of the wild pairings here is the 12 the 12 total power toughness. So, Living Hive is 6 and 2 green for a tramp for a creature with trample 6/6 uh, six, six, and it says whenever Living Hive deals combat damage to a player, Put that many one-one green insect creature tokens on the battlefield. Well, this is perfect. We can we we get a six-six that makes that makes us e- go even wider. Usually, that's like a weird combination of things. Either you want to go wide or you want to go big. Like you want a big trampler or or you want. You, it's kind of weird that you would want both, but this deck wants both. So living hive yeah. is uh, is a is a great little is a great uh, great creature here. You can get. I mean, this costs eight, so this is another one where it's like, hopefully, you cast a six mana version to get this to get a six six, and then you found Living Hive with the with the with the wild pair if that's possible. But again, just good also on its own without wild pair. This is going to be a creature that's going to help your strategy big time. Cool. For me, this could have been a surprise and discovery. Yeah, it could have been easily. Um, yeah, it was. There's a like it's it's almost all surprises and discoveries from here on out really because of this deck I just because of the <laughs> restriction of either working with whatever total power toughness you choose like you really you're you're restricted in those power toughnesses and I think we'll talk about this after but um uh choosing which power toughness you want like choosing the total is hard that was the hardest part of this deck yeah uh read this next one this is a good one okay we've got Sphinx of Magosi three. Blue, 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 Sphinx, six, six, obviously. Flying, two and a blue. Draw a card, then put a plus one, plus one counter on Sphinx of Magosi. I mean, tr- card draw is super important. Uh, this guy does it. Makes himself bigger. I've always it's loved great. this card. Great card, yeah. This is a great mana sink, right? Like, so three mana draw a card is a very good rate we can get cheaper with certain things but if it's in black we're going to probably pay life for it mm-hmm. but just straight up three i think and and you make the creature bigger and this is a, this becomes a seven seven flyer and then of course and so on and so on um this works well with driven to despair it works great with wild pair this is awesome this card's great we want to draw those cards we want to have big flyers that will that will maybe get trampled from our driven uh, or whatever. So yeah, this is a this is a this could have been in the all star part of the. This could have been in the three stars for sure. Oh yeah, Six most oh, yeah. is great. The only downside is the three blue casting cost, which can sometimes, probably sometimes come up. But you know, just wild pair it out and you're fine. Can be tricky. Uh, here's the other side of the twelve mana, uh, the twelve power toughness is a seven five. You don't see too many of these around. Uh, but this is Bane of Balaged. 
7 uh, generic for a 7-5 colorless Eldrazi. Whenever Bane of Balaget attacks, defending player exiles two permanents he or she controls. So it's like a, uh, it's like Annihilator, but it's better. It's exiling instead of just uh, sacrificing. Yeah. Oh, people hate this. Yeah. People hate it. People hate it. Um, the five toughness means that it's going to trade down a lot of times, so they'll probably just block it with a bunch of things and kill it. But, um, you know, if you choose a person who simply can't do that, Bane of Balaget is going to be a real menace for them. Uh, Oof. Speaking especially if you give it menace. Uh, <laughs> it'll Ugh. be a true menace. So, yeah, I've, I've, I think this is a really good commander card, and I I don't put it in that many brews, but I've, I'm starting to try it out in more brews now and and seeing how it does. And, and so far, I've been I've been pleased. I've been happy with it. The chairman is also pleased. The chairman is also pleased. Uh, there are so <laughs> many great big creatures, right? There's a lot of big six sixes that we want in this deck. I could have named, you know, 10 more that are really good. But they end up just kind of, and like I said, it's kind of toolboxy. So they end up doing a lot of different things. Uh, there's no real general theme between the big creatures and the small creatures other than like we want card draw and we want to be able to handle creatures and things like that, like general regular stuff. So, um, uh, yeah, these were just some of the some of the highlights. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention, I don't, we won't talk about specific cards or anything, but this deck really fears board wipes. It really doesn't want an untimely board wipe to happen, so it runs a couple of good counter spells. Uh, the counter spells are kind of important, and uh, we ran um, uh, Diabolic Tutor. Um, uh, what's the? I always forget the one's name with spell mastery. Uh, the the five. Oh. Man one. oh, I always forget the name of that card. Give me a sec. I will scry follow it up. It's. I want to say it's something packed, but it's not. I know it's not something packed. It's. Ugh, anyways, it's the one with Grizzlebrand, and it's from Magic Origins. Like I can, I can say everything else about it. Oh, you're thinking of Dark Petition? Dark Petition. For some reason, I can't get the word petition to stick in my mind. Dark Petition. Yeah, run that, and I also run the new one from uh, from Ricks, uh, the one where you can actually also look outside your library. Although we don't plan to do that. Yeah. Um, Although, I guess yeah, there. You could, like, you could put. I don't know. I depend. I don't know how it's really handled in Commander, but anyways. Uh, I think what I would want to, if, if if we're talking about it, if we're gonna allow you to bring a handful of cards with that, just because, like, why not? Uh, I feel I would want to find the cheapest twelve total power and toughness possible to just like wild pair out a big thing. Right. Um... I'm gonna but search then you for would, it and scrap. So you mean you'd use it, put it in your hand, and then then that way you can get uh, the biggest thing you want. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, if you have that, the only way you would ever do that is if you already had Wild Pair, of course. Um, otherwise, you'd probably want to get right. driven to despair, or Crab Umbra for that matter. That's why I didn't even really consider it. I was like, you know what? You're just gonna want to find something in, in this deck. I, I'm positive of it. Uh, so yeah, those two things are important. Um, it's only like two or three tutors. It's only, and it's like maybe four or five counter spells just because I, I am really worried about board wipes. But other than that, um, that's, uh, that's what you want to be doing. And it's just, you kind of outvaluing your opponents in this deck. You're, uh, um, every creature does something that, uh, is going to help get you closer to wild pair slash, uh, driven to despair or whatever. So it's all focused on those cards and it all hopefully works well with them. Um, but that's 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 what's going to do. And the th now it's time for the three stars, though. Ooh, three stars of the deck. Three stars. Uh, why don't you take uh, Why don't you take the number three here? Happy to. The third star of the deck is uh, in the one one category. Mm -hmm. This is a creature called Beguiler of Wills. Three blue blue human wizard. So it's another wizard. So this goes good with the zombie. Uh, tap. Gain control of target creature with power less than or equal to the number of creatures you control. Ooh, man, with a crab umber on this, that's so annoying. It's so annoying. And because we make a lot of creatures, because of our eyeless watchers and marsh flitters and things like that, oh, those yeah. add a lot of value to Beguiler of Wills. I played a game, and mind you, it was just on Forge. It was just against computers, against two other opponents. So it was a three-player game. But I, at one point, had enough creatures out that I used Beguiler of Wills to take Galta. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Whoa, Galta. that's that's good. That's got to be an achievement." <laughs> Use Beguiler yeah. Wheels to take a Galta. Yeah, so that was uh, so. Yeah, you can definitely kind of have your pick, and if you get that Crab Umber down, 
not only does it protect your beguiler, but it also lets you do it twice, which is great. Yeah. And then, yeah. Beguiler of Wills. Is it, do you think this is an underrated card? It's tough to say, you know, um, there's a lot it's of very setup, fragile. a lot of setup and it's very fragile and it's expensive five mana for a one, one. Right. But yeah, um, I, I, I'd say it's probably accurately rated. I mean, the decks it's good in, it's quite good in and otherwise it isn't really all that good. Yeah. You, okay. It's a, it's a good amount of setup you need to make her really good. So, I mean, if there's a prodigal sorcerer anywhere around, <laughs> look out uh, or a Royal <laughs> yeah. assassin for that matter. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, number two is Prime Speaker Zagana. Two green, green, blue, blue. Uh, so six mana for a one, one. Uh, legendary Merfolk Wizard. Uh, she's a wizard. Uh, Prime Speaker Zagana. So is Beguiler of Wills, actually. Uh, Prime Speaker Zagana enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is the greatest power among other creatures you control. Prime Speaker Zagana enters the battlefield, or when she enters the battlefield, draw cards equal to its power. Neat. So, obviously, we don't really want to do this when we only have our one power creatures out there. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll only draw two cards if you get Prime Speaker Zagana that way. Um, but what she uh, is in here to do is... If once you do get a six mana creature out, once you do get a, a one of your bigger guys out there, now you're now whatever you know whatever random one one you have or o two you have will also come in and draw you seven cards uh, because you'll go grab Prime Speaker Zagana and she becomes a seven seven, which is great. So yeah, this is so interesting. She's she was one that I was like, oh yeah, because what I did was I looked for total power toughness of of two. Or, uh, of two and just went like okay what are the highest cmc creatures that do that like what's the most value we can get and prime speakers of ghana is basically it i think there was a seven mana one but it was something really stupid that didn't make sense to put in the deck <laughs> <laughs> it's like sacrifice Sorry, it or something it's like okay well i'm not gonna do that um but prime speakers of ghana is great uh, very very good in this deck weird and she's also a, a rare occurrence of a one one creature that you're 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 also fine to have in your hand um, it, it, later, right? Like usually, like later in the game, the one ones lose a little value, even if you have wild pair. But she's good without the wild pair later as well too. So she's just really solid. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, but the number one star we talked about drawing cards. Drawing cards very good. Prime speakers gone is great. But the number one star of the deck is Soul of the Harvest. Four green green elemental six six trample. Whenever another non token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. That's what wild pairs getting. That's what, non token creatures. Exactly. Yep. So whether it's the big ones or the little ones, you're going to be drawing lots of cards off Soul of the Harvest, and the longer it sticks around, obviously, the better it gets. Yeah. And it kind of turns your creature spells into wild wild draw twos. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Every creature you cast will draw you two cards, um, which wow. is awesome. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Specifically with Wild Pair, but again, even if you don't have Wild Pair out, it's just nice to have your creatures cantrip, and that's what'll happen with Soul of the Harvest. It's it's a great card. Yep. Um, great card in most you know creature based decks, but obviously if you're getting two, it's even better. Um, yeah, this was f I, I gotta say I had a lot of fun building this deck, but it was f like I said at times frustrating, at times it was hard. But the hardest thing was deciding on what power toughness level we were gonna go for. It's so interesting to me because this would be a whole different deck if you picked like three two twos. Yeah, or if you four, picked two twos yeah. and like and like eight eights or something like that. Yeah, I thought it was interesting to go for the like the one ones. First of all, because I was seeing I looked for tappers and a lot of them are one ones. So I was like, okay, that yeah. that's good. That works. There's a lot of good stuff in there, and those help you get to the big stuff with the card draw and everything. So um yeah. Also you, wow. you ramp with the one ones. I didn't even really bring that up, but there's uh we have um the O2 tree that's like the bird of paradise tree that taps for mana if i mean it's out of our budget for this particular deck but if you have birds of paradise you can also grab those with your early one ones you can grab your land yeah. war elves and things like that like which i do have in the deck we have some uh some elves that tap for mana so yeah it's cool there's a lot of synergy uh here and uh i mean you're probably not going to get wild pair super early so like you know, but but just having them in there is really nice to to, to help out. And if you can start it's, casting two creatures a turn and you have wild pair out, it's like the ramp does, is still relevant later, right? So it's I don't know, it, it works all pretty well together. Again, though, board wipe, ooh, no good. You don't want that. I board just want to uh, sweet squeeze on, what squeeze on, yeah, 
Quishan, uh, I just want to shout out to Scryfall for a second. Uh, such a useful search tool for cards. Uh, you can search by, I don't know if you can search by cumulative power and toughness, but you can search by color identity, add on power equals this, toughness equals this, and just make sure that those two numbers always add up to your wild pair number yes. and just get a nice, and then you can sort them any way you want. Yeah, I, I used Forge uh, because it, it's like literally clickable. Like I didn't have to figure out what weird syntax oh. to type in to Scryfall. Uh, but I cool. do, of course, love Scryfall. We use it. We're using it right now. Um, uh, but yeah, I just kept, so I'd go like six sixes and then I'd go like look for seven fives, look for eight fours. Yeah. And then there are basically none above that. Uh, so I like changed, went up and down and looked. Yeah. And found some cool stuff. Uh, cool. So yeah, the surprises and discoveries of this deck. They weren't so much uh, discoveries because I know about these cards, but they were surprises in their effect effectiveness. Uh, the first one is Species Gorger. Uh, it's five mana for a 6-6, six, six, so it's actually a little cheaper to cast this 6-6. Six, six. So he's one that you, you can use to get someone good. Uh, but at the beginning of your upkeep, return a creature to you control to its owner's hand. Oh, yeah. So when you've got your wild pair out there, you can, you know, maybe you didn't draw a creature. Guess what? Bounce that Species Gorger back up. Only, play it for only five and get another big, huge monster. Yeah. Or, or if you, you know, anything else. Like, this is where the toolboxy kind of stuff comes in with Wild Pair, right? We can bounce another 1 1, play it, and get one of our, you know, utility creatures or whatever. Very cool. Very, very cool. Very effective in this deck. Very, very good card. Mm. And next, read this one. Uh, after Species Gorger is Path of Discovery, three green enchantment. Whenever a creature enters a battlefield under your control, it explores. This is from uh, Rivals of Ixalan, a new enchantment. Yeah. Uh, what a fun! You found a deck for it. Yeah, kind of right. Like it's it, if it's nice to buff your one ones if you can get that counter, but also this keeps you. It, I mean, this just is just how this card works in general. It keeps lands off the top of your library, keeps you tr keeps you drawing creatures. Like it smooth those draws out. Um, it's great. Path of Discovery is very good in this deck specifically. It's going to dig us deeper because, you know, we can either throw things we don't want in the graveyard, which I think kind of will rarely happen. I think we're pretty much going to be happy to draw whatever non-land card we get. Um, I think it's all going to be pretty good. Uh, but, yeah, keeps your keeps the lands rolling. Uh, yeah, keeps your little your little guys bigger a little bit too, a little bit bigger. Yeah, I like it. I, I I'm glad. Yeah, whenever a creature in the battlefield is explored, it's cool. Yeah, makes the big guys even a bit bigger too. That's also relevant. So great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Path of discovery. Not surprise. Not the bad. Ah. Uh, it is a discovery, uh, but not really. It's more of a surprise. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Well, uh, before we get down to the budget report, let's talk about Wizard Tower again, real quick. Let's talk about Wizard Tower. I know that, so we all know that they do free shipping anywhere in Canada, 15,000 singles or more. Mm -hmm. But if you want, uh, they have a wonderful selection of boulders from Ultimate Guard. Uh, uh. Just all sorts of colors, or you get some archives to go with that. Uh, that is a thing you can do. No free shipping on products. Like, it has to be singles for the free shipping. Yeah. But, like, man. You having a hard time finding that pink boulder case that you want, as I am? Maybe I'll get it from Wizard Tower. Uh, that's where I got it because I was given uh, given to it. I was wait what? <laughs> I was given it uh, to me uh, for Christmas, um, and they bought uh, my my wife's family is from Ottawa, so they went to Wizard. They went to the physical store, and that's where they got my hot pink boulder case, as we've Ooh, talked about on the show pink. before. Hot pink. I just love. I want all the colors. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm not. Butler Butler wants them all to be white so that they all look uniform. I respect that. <laughs> uh, but he doesn't know what deck is what. He has to like has look to at all of them. Look at all of them. I mean, I still have to do that, too, because I have more than one of the same color. And I'm like, so I'm like, wait, what, which one's this again? Um, but I generally know. I can flip a coin and get it right. Half yeah, the right. Time. Um, yeah. Also, check out mtgcanada.com. You'll find articles written by myself and Sean. Yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. Let's get back. Let's get back into it, and let's take a look at this budget report. Back to the budget part. This is where we take the cards, and the chairman chops them up, and the ones that are the most chopped are at the top. <laughs> we did think of uh, maybe naming this uh, segment something 
like chopped so that does make sense because it's kind of more like chopped because there's more than one secret ingredient right like yeah. it's kind of, but we're not chopping anything there's no there's no elimination so it's more like iron chef in that we just present the dishes at the end and you know we decided we're conflating a few of these cooking shows <laughs> yeah. but Iron Chef has way cooler imagery yeah. and style, so we're going to go We wouldn't that. be able to do that fun intro. Yeah, so Iron Chef definitely wins out big time. Yeah. Um, and you don't get to say squeeze on. Squeeze on. And, uh, <laughs> and for those of you who are only familiar with Iron Chef America, do yourselves a service and go on YouTube and watch some episodes of the original Iron Chef, uh, which is from Japan, and uh, would get um, uh, dubbed in English to show on the Food Network. It is a great – it's so good – because they use, you know, cool, like, Japanese ingredients that we don't get to see uh, in our, like, regular, you know, North American cuisine over here. So it's, like, really, always really fun to watch, like, Morimoto and Sakai, like, use the coolest ingredients and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I know those, yeah, I, I ended up, know, I remember knowing the Japanese chefs better than uh, better than the American ones. Uh, but anyways, okay. Bobby Budge, Flay. Bob, Bobby Flay. Kat Cora was an Iron Chef at one point. <laughs> Uh, Michael, what's his face? That guy who won the competition. See, they started giving out like, oh, this guy can be an Iron Chef. Michael, the guy from the Chew, he was like the he won the competition to become a new Iron Chef. Mind you, he's a great chef. But anyways, I it lost a little bit of its like coolness. Uh, they were no longer Iron, right? It's like whatever. Want some new dude gets to be it, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the, you're an Iron <laughs> Chef purist. Yeah, I am. I am an Iron <laughs> Chef purist. Yeah. Uh, even, yeah, uh, anyways, Mara Batali was an Iron Chef. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the budget report here. Uh, we came in under budget, uh, 49 bucks uh, and, a, and a gumball um, for this deck. Um, our most expensive card was Chasm Skulker, which is uh, a fun, like, little value card here, too. It's a uh, two and a blue for a 1-1, uh, one, one, Squid Horror. Whenever you draw a card, you put a plus one, plus one counter on Chasm Skulker. And when Chasm Skulker dies, you create X one blue uh, one one blue squid creature tokens with Island Walk, where X is a number of plus one plus one counters on it. So squiddies, little squiddies with Island Walk. Originally, I wanted to make a bunch of one one creatures that like actually are will, will end up being bigger, right? And but there, are, there actually aren't that many of them. Uh, uh, Sagana is one of them, and Chasm Skulker is like the other one. Uh, so Chasm yeah. Skulker is really good because we do have. A lot of card draw in here. We're trying to draw lots of cards, and um, Ooh, just getting how big is getting this guy early mob. is great. Oh, is a scoop mob a one one? It probably is, right? I didn't even. Uh, I didn't. I abandoned. Scoot mob is a one one. I abandoned that. Um, I abandoned that. Uh, uh, that plan kind of early, um, but yeah, you could definitely Fair. throw a scoop mob in there. Scoop mob is good because it only costs one too, doesn't it? Yep, costs one green. That's a nice one to get. It's so, like you can scoop mob and get. I mean, you w- I keep thinking of it like you can do that on turn one. It's like, no, you no, you don't have wild pair out on turn one. You got to wait till turn six to get that. Um, yeah. Anyway, so ca- but ca- Chasm Skulker is quite good. But if you did want to save money, if you did want to uh, cut budget, I think you could cut this card because it's it's incremental, the growth, right? It's, it's not really like it's not super reliable to get it very big. This is not a deck that draws a ton of cards. Uh, it does draw a ton of cards, but it does it incrementally, right? Like it's not like okay. it's 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 hard to draw like have one big huge card draw like yeah i don't know you have to wait a long time like i think chasm skulker sits out there for a long time before it gets really big so yeah. anyways yeah um decent card though uh pretty solid but it's cuttable this next one okay. this next one i would not cut uh three dollars for a uh, time stream navigator uh one in a blue one one human pirate wizard with ascend if you have the city's blessing or so if you have 10 permanents you have the city's blessing two blue blue tap Put time stream navigator. Oh, I see where this is going. <laughs> Put time stream navigator on the bottom of its owner's library. Take an extra turn after this one. Activate only if you have the city's blessing. Andy, why is this <laughs> excellent in the deck? Oh my god, this is so good in the deck because obviously we can get it with wild pair over and over again. Yes. Uh, if you have time stream navigator, you might want to sandbag a couple of one ones in your hand because what you can do, you it's it's you can't go infinite with it. But you can um, mostly because it has to tap, actually. Um, well, if you got species gorger, you can return something to your hand mm-hmm. to get it. Oh, again. the species gorger with this is is wild because you can keep getting it. Um, Would you say it's a wild? It's a wild pair. pair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
but yeah, obviously, so you need a send, which is very easy to get, I think, just in Commander in general. Judging how easy it is to get in Limited, I think it's basically as like easier to get in Commander. But also this deck, like I said, goes wide, so it's lots of little tokens around and stuff. You'll get a send no problem. Uh, so two and, a, two and two blue, you tap it, you take an extra turn, you put this on the bottom of your library. Then uh, maybe you play, oh, I don't know, any of the other one ones you have. Uh, you get Time Stream Navigator again out onto the battlefield. Uh, which means next turn, the next turn you take, you can tap her and do it again. You can keep doing it. That's infinite. It, it's if not you have species it's not, gorger, it, though. It's not infinite uh, without well, without species gorger. I'm not talking about species gorger just yet. Sure, sure, sure. But just with the one one chain, it's not technically infinite. But you can go for yeah. a pretty long time, depending on the number of one one creatures you have. But as Sean is yeah. about to point out, species gorger uh, does let you go infinite because you'll bounce a different one one. Mm-hmm. Right during your upkeep, so you'll play it, and Time Stream Navigator appears, and then so like so okay so so, so then you wait so you, so you let's say we got her, an extra turn so you got Species Gorger you got Time Stream Navigator and you've got I don't know let's say uh, I'm one more yeah one cool more. we activate Time Stream Navigator to get an extra turn and it goes to the bottom of our library. We have to play a one one. You want to do to it the same it. turn because then Time Stream Navigator will not have uh, summoning sickness the next your your on your next extra turn. Right, and if we do that, so now the board we have an extra turn in the bank, Species Gorger two one ones and Time Stream. Then, on our next turn, we return one of those one ones. We put Time Stream on the bottom of our library for a bank another turn. Play that other one one. The same one, one, and then time stream comes back. And that's our loop, and you can keep doing that. And that 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 that, that is an infinite loop. Um, yeah. mind you, that requires time stream, species gorger, and two one ones. It's a four card combo, which is not obviously not a, a you know a true game breaking combo. And there's lots of ways to disrupt it, but uh, but that's fun. Those are the, that's the kind of those are the kind of combos I like. That's the kind of combo where it's like, okay, if that's an infinite combo. You worked hard to get that, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like you worked very hard. You, your whole disruptible on many angles. Disruptable. Your whole deck is not just geared towards doing it. Uh, you, yeah. Oh, you also need wild pair. That's a five card combo. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's it's <laughs> it's tough to get it, which is why I don't really consider it to be that an infinite combo. But it definitely is something that will that you can abuse if you get time stream navigator out there. It's it's this. I think this is the way to abuse this card in Commander. I think we kind of stumbled upon that. Wild pair, right? Bottom of your library. Wild pair, yeah. I mean, there might be more ways. There's I'm probably sure people. Yeah, like I'm guessing there's a way to, like Grenzo maybe can do something. I know it. Grenzo is black. Um, um, but if you had if you had a, what would that be? A Grixis deck, and you had Grenzo out and Time Stream Navigator. I guess you could do something with that, because you put it on the bottom, then you Grenzo her back. Yeah. You keep doing that maybe. That that might be a more yeah, efficient that way. That definitely works. That definitely works. Yeah. Anyways, uh it's it was just fun to discover this. When I when I saw this in the list of one ones, I was like, Oh man, bottom of the library. I was like, Oh yes, of course. That's so great. Yes. So that's yes. really fun. So I wouldn't cut this card. It's three bucks. Um, uh, and it's, it's only three because it's like like it's new, yeah. people are figuring it out. Like it might not ever go. I don't know, man. I don't think this will stay three, no, will I, it? No, I don't think it will. I think I I it's too much you know what i mean like it's not really abusable like the other time but it but it has that first of all it has that like mythic tax and it has the tax of everyone loves taking extra turns so it's i don't i don't know if it'll ever really go much below three dollars like but um anyways time stream navigator very fun card in this deck do not cut it keep it in there do not cut um and finally uh we have baleful strix which is about two bucks Uh, it's the blue black artifact flying death touch one one that when it enters it draws a card this is a very good card too that you talk about a toolbox uh you talk about wanting to get something out there that's going to deter attacks well baleful strix is great because not only does it do that kills whatever it blocks it's going to draw you another little card here which is yeah so this card's awesome is it worth two bucks kind of i th- it kind of is actually um so i you probably could cut it but uh but when you're in a game and you know you just need something to stop this giant creature from attacking you and killing all your things, Baleful Strix is the thing you want. So uh, it stops flyers dead in their tracks. It's great. I love Baleful Strix actually in this deck. And I, so I, I would advise not cutting it. Fair. It's actually really, it's actually quite, quite good. Um, Fair. 
Okay. Uh, you will. But this dish, were there any ingredients mm. for this dish that were too expensive to import? Uh, so yes, of course, uh, there are. Um, but there was nothing really specific to the decks, the way the deck works, um, that we really were like hurting for. You know what I mean? Like, I guess maybe like a parallel lives or something like that would have been really nice. Um, but right. So w- what you're talking about is how like with this section we try to only highlight cards that are like really good for this particular yeah, brew. Yeah. Like it wouldn't. I mean, we would always say like always Cyclonic Rift, right? Of like it gets boring to hear that over right. and over. Or you know, doubling season. Okay, sure. Yeah. Every just about every deck can use doubling season if it's green. Um. So, I mean, I kind of think the same thing goes for Parallelize. Like, oh, we have some token makers. Well, obviously, Parallel Lives would be quite good. Um, uh, I ended up just like, and because of our big creatures, it's kind of a toolboxy thing. So we just kind of want good, like, it's kind of like good stuff. It's like Sultai wild pair, good stuff almost. Um, yeah. you just kind of end up wanting those general good stuff things. So like, you know, she oldred with spring one is a nice big six, six that can end the game and be, uh, have a great effect on the game. Uh, a worm coil engine is another great one that's out of budget, but obviously, but these cards are just generally good in whatever deck they go in. So there wasn't really anything specifically, but obviously these cards would would also be amazing in the deck. Yeah, yep. that's kind of it. There you go. Well, uh, the chairman is honored by the deck. <laughs> you have put together a delicious dish that tastes good. Uh, the initial taste of the one ones uh, meets the tongue, <laughs> and then it is filled out by. The flavors of the six sixes, the twelve total power and toughness, is a lovely aftertaste <laughs> of the cr- and having the crab umbra is a wonderful palate cleanser. Uh, this <laughs> we are honored by this dish. Uh, driven to this bear, probably being the dessert, I would imagine. Then you just add that the on dessert. at the end. Yeah, um, a little pink jelly thing. Yeah, the driven to despair was the toughest part. When uh, so last week you might remember, uh, Sean had path of metal. And uh, I and I, I had driven to despair, and uh, I remember just being like, "Well, it's kind of like you gave me two cards with driven to despair," and I, and then you were like, "Well, I mean, not really. You want to cast both of them at the same time." And I was like, "Oh, yeah, you're right. You do want to cast both of them at the same time." But then I really gave Sean two cards with the flip cards because <laughs> they do two very different things. Um, well, in your defense, though, I really feel like it's it's really just the back, right? Like for for I'm looking metal? at the yeah, back of it. I guess you are, yeah. Uh, and it's just tough to. I just I just got to go through a hoop to flip it. Yeah. Um, whereas driven to despair works really well, even if you do want to save it for two things. Like I didn't. We didn't want to talk about that card too much because it is kind of that was the that was the hardest one to to work into the brew. So simply because I felt like it's like what it brought to the table was just fairly like um like it's just it just does what it does right like it's like it's like yeah kind of like an overrun like if you put overrun in there it's like well i guess i put a bunch of creatures in like i guess i make it a heavy creature deck i make it go wide with tokens or something like that's so but i thought that um uh driven to despair both driven and despair work well with both sides of the of the deck right so whether it's a lot of one ones you have um it's going to draw you more cards that way um the despair makes them harder to block and all that or or the big ones gives them trample and all that sort of thing so i actually think it ended up working out well with that and and i think like like an iron chef challenge right not every ingredient is going to be the forefront of the dish Right, right? right some ingredients are just like nice to have in there yeah exactly yeah yeah totally and i think that worked and i think uh it was really fun like Wild Pair is such a weird card that it really messes with your brain because you want to pick. Like, what do you think? What what do you think you would have done with Wild Pair? Do you think you would have did what I did, where I picked two only, so that way we could get everything? I thought about making everything be one, so like everything can get everything. I try. Oh. I, I thought about that, but I was like, I just don't think that's realistic. I don't think I can build. You know, I don't think I can make you know thirty some odd creatures or whatever all have the same yeah. total power toughness. I just don't know if that's going to be that's realistic. That's tough. I, I My gut is to go into more groups in a way. Yeah. Like maybe four groups or something, just cover a ton of bases. Right. I don't know. I don't know. Like, like this is part of what I was excited to hear you come up with because I have no idea. I love the card wild pair. I haven't ever brewed with it yet. And I'm just like, ooh, this is a fun so one. So knowing what you know about this deck, what I, what I was doing with the deck, what I... Um, 
what I decided to do with the tapping, with the, you know, the big creatures, the small creatures, all that. What do you think is the one creature that didn't, that doesn't pair up with anything? I, I will, I didn't name it. I haven't said it yet. It's not in the notes. Uh, oh, I think I know because of a question you asked me earlier. Oh, really? You okay. said, what's that card that does this? Oh, no, I don't, uh, I don't, I didn't ask you about this guy. My guess was Garrick's Horde. No, I, that was a card I wanted to include because I thought it was a 6-6, six, six, but it's not. I think it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yes. Okay. Um, oh, then I don't know. So I'll tell you, it's it's a it has nothing to do with the strategy. That's why I didn't care that it didn't pair up with anything. It's it's purely in there just because of its good commander utility. So it's it's just a to me it's just an, a, a ubiquitous commander card. Like it's just great. Hmm. I don't know. There's too many of them. No, it's way it's way too hard to guess, right? Did I navigate? No. Uh, the answer is burnished heart. Burnished heart. <laughs> I needed just I, when I was putting in the ramp, you know, I wanted to make sure I had lots of good ramp in here. And I was like, well, burn it. I love burnished heart. I put it in every deck that's three or more colors, even two colors. So, you know what? I'm going to put it in here too. Who cares if it doesn't match up with anything? It's just great. Like, you're still just going to want to play it when you get it. Like, you don't care that it doesn't pair with wild, uh, wild pair at all. Don't care. Nope. Don't, don't care. care. So, burnished heart is the one that managed to slip through the wild pair pairing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, what a fun couple of iron brews in this like mini two episode series. Yeah, yeah, this was good. I we're definitely gonna we'll come, come back, back to this, this for sure. For sure, we are. And I'll tell you what. If uh, oh, th I wanted to just talk about this real quick. Um, when I chose my three for you, I th tried to think about like light synergy. I didn't want to make it so obvious that you know they all work together this one obvious way, and this is all you should do. Um, I did want it to be a little bit random, so like. I sort of stumbled upon the path of metal uh, uh, vindictive lich thing of like, oh, one damage will kill it. It's like, okay, well, that seems interesting. Let's see how he works with that. And then the silver skin armor was just like, okay, here's the here's a random one just thrown in that yeah. like, maybe it could be used like to make it an artifact somehow and kill it, I thought. But anyways, uh, I think it's the perfect... how did you do it? How did you approach it? So I knew wild pair was going to be one of them because I loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I was like, well, so that means creatures. So what's a card that goes good with creatures? That's where Crab Umber comes from. Uh, and I feel like my angle is like, what are cards that are interesting with a lot of potential, but don't necessarily point you in a specific direction? Right. Right. And then Driven to Despair was to kind of round out a salt. I was like, I feel like I want it to be Sultai for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I felt that. Uh, and I was like, oh, this is a nice one. It's just like a utility thing. It also is dependent on creatures, which is, I feel like, the one thing that will be true of whatever you do. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And at first seemed daunting. Uh, but once you get into it, you uh, it's actually, yeah, it was it's it's really, it's it's a cool exercise. Man, restriction breeds creativity. It sure does. It sure does. Every time. Um, and I would happily play this deck. I think it's a, a lot. A wild pair is a fun, fun card oh, to man. build around, right? Like I think, I think from what I saw, because after I was done this, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna look up what wild, like what decks use wild pair. And it's a lot of like tribal stuff. It's a lot of like elves use wild pair, slivers use wild pair, um, because yeah. you know a lot of elves are one ones or whatever or two twos. A lot of slivers are one ones. Uh, surprisingly, I found that out just doing just building the deck. Um, uh, so yeah, it does it does really well in those as like this kind of added bonus. But to build around it specifically uh, was a lot of fun, a lot of extra fun. Cool and and like there's we could do more wild pair brews. You could easily new colors, new numbers. Uh, oh man, this new colors, has such potential. new colors, new numbers. A hundred percent wild pair can easily be. You can you can build specifically with wild pair for one type of strategy. And like I had to use the tapping and the uh, the idea of like going wide or whatever with driven to despair. But you can totally any of these those other cards change. Like it changes what wild pair does for the deck too, right? So. Wow, I almost want there to be another alternative format where we just assume that wild pair is out all the time. <laughs> like as a world. As a world where everyone gets wild pair. wild pair. There would just be too many. I bet you there's like combos you can get where it's just broken, where, you know, or like. Yeah, like time stream navigator. Yeah, and all exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe we just didn't make the rule, that kind of rule. Just I mean, maybe hey, it needs its own. I was going to say, maybe it has a ban list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the wild pair uh, commander league. 
Yeah. It has its own little band list. Yeah, or I mean, I mean, if you if you were serious about making this a uh, uh, a little competitive format, and you didn't, or I guess it wouldn't, it was very casual, but you didn't want it to get that way, you could just make a sub rule where like whatever you've wild paired for can never be wild paired for again in your deck. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, now, now you're really it's kind of be kind of fun to do this thing where you keep getting the same stuff, right? That'd be kind of fun. That's true. That's true. Anyway, work in progress. Anyways, yeah, work yeah, in work progress. in progress. This yeah. is a fun idea. If you have any more of these types of fun ideas or if you have your own Iron Brew challenges, send them into us, man. Send them into us via Twitter, uh, 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 at Brew. Send it to us on email. We haven't said the email because it's always in the little thing at the end, but it's commandersbrew at gmail.com if you ever want to write yeah. us a bigger message uh, that doesn't fit into the, uh, what is it, like 200 and something characters now on Twitter. Yeah, some people use will will tweet Twitter DMs with questions yeah. about brewing and stuff like That's that. That's cool. fine too. Yeah. But yeah, but if your question is a little deeper, right? Like yeah, Gmail's fine. Oh yeah, totally. Write us a, write us an email. We we love to read it. Uh, if you're a patron, go to the you know Discord's great to get at us. We get notified when people mention us in Discord, so it's nice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, get you know get in contact if you like this idea. Let, also, just let us know over on YouTube. Leave a comment. Hit a hit a subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube right now. That really helps. We haven't mentioned this in a while, but if you haven't written an iTunes review for us, that is very very helpful. Super super helpful. So, um, uh, you know, if you want to just take two seconds and just go write anything, it doesn't even matter what you say in the actual review. Like just giving us the review is all is all we need. So, uh, that would be a real big help. Would, it would. That would be huge. But thank you very much for listening. And we'll get a Bruise News segment coming up right now. And uh, until then, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Bruise News. I'm Andy. And I'm Sean. On today's show, Siroc Dragonclaw. And a bear. Thank you, Andy and Sean. It is I, Surak Dragonclaw. I'm a bear. Yes, and we have been asked to present tips for the home. If you are having people over, Surak think it important to maybe bake cookies, get the cookie smell in there, very nice for your guests, or perhaps scented candle. I don't like cookies. What what if you don't like cookies in your cave? Just make it smell like whatever you want. I like making it smell like moldy berries and old wet fur. Yes, okay, what what you were making it smell like is not the important thing, but important to put effort in. Guests notice and put effort in for smell, yes. Good, thank you, Bear. Make a good smell with your bum. Or, I um, may not recommend bum, but know your guests. Maybe guests like bum. Okay, okay, also, okay, having guests over take lots of time, right? We know this, we know this. So, if you only have time to clean one room in house, clean bathroom for most effective presentation. Why you gotta clean your bathroom for? You just poo in there anyways. Okay, yes, but, yes, oh, okay, but sometimes, you know, it, it just, what a sparkly bathroom give guest appearance that whole house always very clean. It, perhaps an illusion, but not one Surak afraid of going. Sorry, what are you saying? I saw a bird. Can we, bear, bear, hey, bear. I want to eat that bird. Bear? Anyways, don't listen to this guy. I poo in my bathroom. I poo in all my rooms. <laughs> That's what we do in caves. Bear. You've been to my cave. It's nice. Bear. Bear? Focus, okay? Focus, bear? We trying to give tips on home. Okay. I don't care. No. No. Okay, only job is to care, bear. Okay, only... You, you must care, okay? Care, bear. <laughs> bear. Like the 80s. Nah. Surak, uh, you said you wouldn't get violent, okay? We do not do this. B, shout out to all my bear friends. Five, four. Jerry the bear. Three, two. Stiffy the bear. St- Stiffy, don't talk about Stiffy. Stiffy, Stiffy murder. Ah, man, Stiffy's rude. Rude dude. Stiffy. Yeah. Stiffy Where'd has- that bird go? Bear. Bear? Focus, please, okay? Me not going to ask again, okay? Okay. You're getting very angry. Okay, okay, okay. So, 
If you having guests over, sometimes good idea to have special placemats uh, that stay extra clean and are colorful for a little bit of pop in dining room. If you not have dining room, it's okay to eat around kitchen table. It's also okay to eat your guests. No, Sometimes they're no, little bear. and fat and no, you want to eat no, them. No, bear. Bear? No. You got big claws like me, you could kill them. No, me, me sir, up Dragon Claw, me not actually have the claws, but me, me can fight, bear. You, you know what to see. You know what to see. Okay? Bring it. Oh. Oh no, oh no, you didn't. Come at me, bro. No, no, me, me could. Bear don't care. No, bear, bear, bear going to care. Bear don't care all day. Bear. bear. You can't see me. If you want to contact us, I'm at Sean Tabaris. And I'm at Andy Holbone. Send us an email at commandersbrew at gmail.com. You can find out when we go live on Twitch if you follow us at twitch.tv. And if you care to support us on Patreon, check us out at patreon.com. And you can find our deck list on tappedout.net. And if we forgot anything, commandersbrew.com. <laughs> <laughs>